That will be the main waterfalls. We will supplement it with that water shooting out below. We've got our work cut out for us today with the impending rain. I don't know if we're gonna get this thing done, but we're sure as heck gonna try. And uh, I think we're in good shape. We just have a lot of detail work and a lot of cleanup, dirt work, all that stuff left to do, which as you guys know, dirt and rain equals mud equals suckage. So hopefully it doesn't suck too bad today. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Good morning everybody, it's Chris from Team Aquascape. We have another incredible video for you today. We are going to be doing a small pondless waterfall. Actually, it's kind of like one of our sandbox pondless waterfalls, but on steroids. And we are out here in Campton Hills, which is only a stone's throw away from the shop at a beautiful property, beautiful backyard, brand new construction. Guys are already here. We've got the truck bed down and off. We've got our plastic mat walkway. Gorgeous ranch style home. I have already been here and seen the inside, but it is absolutely beautiful. So here's our access for stone, for everything. Guys have already started stripping out all the grass, but let's go back here and see what's going on. We still have the Frisbee fellas from Rochester, New York over here, and we are working on stripping out the grass. We've got 12 large aqua blocks on this project. Pondless vault there, waterfall starts over there, about a knee high, 24, 30 inch waterfall. Like I said, it's gonna be pondless waterfall on steroids, and it's just gonna turn out incredible. So. Once we get this grass out, we'll go ahead and mark out where our large aqua blocks are going to sit. Bring the, the mini over here and start digging, throwing all that dirt back up around. We'll end up feathering that berm quite a ways out past everything, but we will do some retaining wall work around these two spruces. It's gonna be a very, very nice waterfall and great addition to an already cool backyard that's already living the aquascape lifestyle. But look at this sunroom, absolutely gorgeous. There's a chase lounge in there if you can see it, but just an awesome, look at all these windows. Incredible outdoor kitchen, outdoor eating, seating, fire pit play area. What a cool backyard. Can't wait to spend the next couple days out here. everybody we are back again today out here at this beautiful pondless waterfall project we have a heavy chance of rain the rest of the day but we are out here giving it the old college try and gonna try and wrap this thing up yeah Lee in the background over there him and then his teammate Jack are out here again with Juan and myself buttoning up this pondless waterfall right now what we're doing is we incorporated a patio pond into the top of this waterfalls this will start everything off or at least give the illusion starting off the entire waterfalls we also have have a ball valve down below for supplemental water. We have a five to nine pump on here, which might be a little aggressive for this, but we love the flexibility of these variable speed pumps to be able to really dial in that flow. So we're gonna cut this notch open nice and wide, but that will only give us probably two, 3,000 gallons per hour. And then we want to supplement that with another three to 5,000 gallons in through here. So what we did is we ran a manifold back in here. You can see our plumbing. We've got our three inch T, and then we have three to two reducers all the way around. And one of the pipes goes into the side of the spillway bowl for the patio pond right here. The other one shoots straight down, elbows, and then we have a ball valve on that. The reason we put ball valves on both is so that we can really adjust that flow. You'll also notice that over here, we have a bulkhead fitting coming in through the liner. So this is where the plumbing is going to come in, side the liner, feed this manifold, so we're gonna put a stubble pipe, then a two inch MPT, and we will silicone that and run it right into that bulkhead fitting. And then on the back side of the liner, we will run another MPT with a three to two reducer bushing and then size up to three inch and three inch pipe will run all the way around here down to our pump vault, which is being fed by our five to nine. The reason we went with three inch is because we really wanna maximize the volume of the pump. And with two inch line, depending on head height, sometimes you can only get 6,500 to 7,500 gallons of water through that 
that pipe at any given time. So regardless if, it, if it's a 10,000, 20,000 gallon per hour pump, you can only push so much water through a two inch line. So we just wanna make sure that we are maximizing the capability of the pump, which is why we went with the three inch line and we can always dial back from there. So let me back up. Oh, nice work. What'd you do, Warren? What happened? Silicone. It exploded on you. Oh, that, yeah, and then we'll just get it on the rack too. Yep, yep, nice job, Juan. Juan had a little accident with the silicone. That's okay. So just to back up, give you kind of more of a view here. So we ended up, that will be the main waterfalls. Again, we will supplement it with that water shooting out below. We're gonna put a rock in right where those cobbles sit just to help that water swell up and disguise the water shooting out of that ball valve down below. And then this patio pond will fall down. That's a good two foot drop, fall down into this pooling area behind a rock and then kind of twist and turn around the boulder that will sit there. We have a split waterfalls here. We've got a waterfall stone here. And then we also have a little tributary that will split between these two rocks, bounce here and then come over here and we will do a horsetail fall all the way down into the basin. The reason we have this rock here is I want this water to fall down, swell up and kind of rip through here. We're gonna bib liner all the way across so that we can get that pooling, swelling water coming through, giving the illusion of the extension of the stream. So we've got our work cut out for us today with the impending rain. I don't know if we're gonna get this thing done, but we're sure as heck gonna try. And uh, I think we're in good shape. We just have a lot of detail work and a lot of cleanup, dirt work, all that stuff left to do, which as you guys know, dirt and rain equals mud equals suckage. So hopefully it doesn't suck too bad today. Wish us luck. All right, so here's that finished product. So we've got, I know the lighting is tough, but here's that bulkhead fitting. Remember the rubber gasket always goes on the water side. So we've got the rubber gasket and then the, the rigid hard plastic gasket is on the outside of the liner as well as the collar nut. And then we've got our MPT, a little chunk of two inch pipe, about three inches long. That goes into our three to two reducer bushing, which is this fitting right here. And then of course you have our three inch T. You'll also notice that the sweep of this T comes down like this. What you don't want to do is you don't want to flip that and have the sweep going backwards. The reason for that is water's all flowing this way. So we want to use that T to its advantage and how it's designed and have the sweep with the flow of water. So it comes down like this and also goes straight in like that. You can see we've got our ball valve down in there. We'll have to adjust that. It will be a little cumbersome. Kind of get underneath the bowl here and adjust that. But what we'll do is we're going to trim this pipe in here, bring this ball valve in close, and then we'll start locking this stuff together. I'm going to get a rock right in here for that water to swell up around as this thing falls. And then also the water shooting out from down here like I said earlier in the video. So we just have to kind of button this up. We put a bunch of cobbles around just to stabilize this pipe and then we'll come back in on the other, on the back side of the liner and attach our plumbing to that. don't want to have happen is all that rock and gravel to slide down and obstruct that ball valve down there. So you can see how Juan's done a really good job kind of locking those cobbles into place so that we can still get our arm back in here. It will suck to do it, but it's the easiest way to hide that thing. And all of the fittings and everything is inside the liner as opposed to digging in a valve box and trying to do all of this stuff outside of the liner after the fact. So you could do it either way, but you still have to run two two inch lines to the bottom and then as well as up into the bowl. So we just decided to do it all this way. Well, as you can see by the wheelbarrow, we were starting to get rain. Very unfortunate because we were just starting to hit our stride. Um, we got all the plumbing done, starting to do some of the detail work inside the waterfalls. Um, and then we were going to really start plowing into doing all the edge work and that kind of stuff, getting all the dirt in. So we're hoping that uh, we can do what we can and maybe we'll continue on today or we'll take a look at the forecast and see what happens. But uh, we'll see. Guys, we are back. We ran into some rain yesterday. So we are now back here to finish this incredible pilot's waterfall. Got a little bit of detail work left in the waterfall to do. All the plumbing is done. We've got to get the pump hooked up down in the basin and then go ahead and start doing all the dirt work and retaining wall work. Um, we've got a much different day today than we did yesterday. We're blessed for that and we are ready to roll. So I think I should put the camera down and let's get going.
everybody, it's that time. It is reveal time. You can hear the sounds of the running water behind me and it turned out absolutely incredible. Such a gorgeous waterfall between the mix of the small granite and the moss rock, which I love using. I love the character on it. I love the formations of the rock. Oh my gosh, it just looks so great. And the way it mixes with the granite just really, really helps pull the whole design together. So without further ado, let's turn the camera around and show you what we got. What do you think? Absolutely incredible. The sun is finally shining, but we are done. This project is a wrap. You can see that green slate patio pond starting off the waterfalls. I love that it falls at kind of a 45 degree angle from where we're viewing it at. Falls into a little pool, then comes back around behind that rock. So you can just see we have all this little movement in here. And speaking of movement, I love this waterfalls, this split waterfalls in through here. You got a wide waterfalls, and then you've got another one right down below, kind of what we call sometimes a secret or a mystery falls. I actually love this rock right in the middle of this pool. So often, this, this gets left completely open in here, but by having this in here, the water falls back behind it, creates a swell or a pool back behind, and then kicks back this way. I love the use of the cobbles, just breaking it up in certain areas, tying different parts together. We've got our fake rock lid over top of the pump fault right there with a handful of stones. It's not totally finished because it still has some landscaping left to do but it just turned out gorgeous we left plenty of room for plant pockets all along here we made sure to put some retaining walls down in front of those spruce trees so as they grow the soil is not gonna be piled up around the trunk of those but just all this incredible space for plants to flank each side we'll get some height back behind there I love the way the bowl is framed out between the two rocks up at the very top of the waterfalls and just some of these long I call them hot dog rocks but some of these long skinny rocks you know really changing the shape of the stream we've got one there we've got another one over here it just looks gorgeous absolutely love it absolutely love it Juan Lee Jack Steve the three guys from Frisbee landscaping they came down to help us from Rochester New York did a fantastic job we had such a fun time building this project I hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you have any questions regarding the plumbing or the rock calculations or how we spec this thing out or even how we built some technical questions feel free to let us know in the comments below but this thing turned out gorgeous let us know what you think of the project and until next time we'll see you later